Hey everybody, welcome. This is Jared from Brickhouse Media, and I'm super excited to speak with an old dear colleague of mine. Um, Paul old, Hitchcock. old, old dear colleague. He is not old, but I have known him for many, many years. Um, and just as a reminder, we are Brickhouse Media. We create multimedia for emerging thought leaders, founders, entrepreneurs, startup businesses. We work in video production, social media content, and we're really creating a visual media world for people to launch whether it's a business, a solopreneurship, or as a thought leader into your space. So I met Paul when we started the company years ago up in Oakland, we used to have an office, and we were based out of a one room where I used as a studio and an office, and Paul connected through, I believe it was an, an event conference we went to, right Paul? Right, exactly, yeah. He saw what we were doing and I think he got the light bulb moment went off and he said, there's something interesting here and we're struggling a little bit to create a social media strategy campaign. So well, I'm yeah. going to reach out to Jared. Yeah. Well, part of it was, it was interesting because this was, I don't know, maybe nine years ago or something. And it wasn't that long ago. No, we didn't even start our business. I think it was 2014. Oh, 2014. Okay. And you said you, you were shooting video and I got a hold of you and you said, you need to start shooting video. Nobody was doing it at that time. So that's how it started. I, I don't know if nobody was doing it, but it was less than now for sure. Less than now, less than now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you were at the forefront. I was trying to be, yeah, because don't forget, we've been sitting around the campfire for hundreds of thousands of years listening to people talk. Yeah. And you pick up so much more information, my tonation, my voice, my face, my movements, so much more information comes through as a human through video. And that's why Zoom has exploded during this virus. Yeah, it's yeah totally. we need to see people. Yeah, I totally agree. Because especially when you're interacting and you're selling and marketing, you know, the the number one interaction is face to face sitting in the same room, right? Yeah. If you can't yeah. do that, then it's video. Then maybe it's a phone call, then email, and et cetera, et cetera. So video, I totally agree with you. Powerful. So what was going on back then that you were confused by, that you were challenged by? What what was the challenge you were having? Yeah. So, I mean, it was really branding because, you know, I do a lot of work uh, for a very busy law firm, as Jared, you know, and, yeah. um, you know, the, the challenge was we looked like every other law firm. And I think this is a challenge that's very common. Uh, what, you know, if you're a solopreneur or a small business, especially a solopreneur, everybody looks the same. And so we were doing great things as a firm, but just looking like everybody else on social media, and I wanted to stand out and be different. And that's why I saw kind of what you were doing, what you were saying. And I said, okay, I need to embrace a video strategy here. How the heck do I do it? And you got me going and, you know, have incorporated it into everything we do at the law firm, into my media pra you know, practice. And it's just exploded our brand and just catapulted us to the top of the heap. And we were just standing out and everybody else. So it's been awesome. It's been awesome to see your rise. Do you know how many followers you have on LinkedIn now? Yeah, so, you know, we went from nothing. Uh, you know, when I first met you and started building out and got a blog that goes out to 120,000 people. Wow. Yeah. This is a law firm, remember? <laughs> this is a, yeah. How many locations? How, much, how big is the firm? How many locations? Yeah, I mean, really, we've got our main location in Southern California, and then we've got, a, you know, an office in, in Northern California, and that's kind of it. And, you know, we've got a big, you know, footprint across the country yeah. helping people. But, um, you know, we're a boutique firm, so we're not some, you know, massive national firm. And Yeah, but to have a list that big is so impressive that you guys have really earned that over the years. Yeah, yeah. It's been, I've cultivated that, you know, doing it the right way. So we got that, you know, and between our LinkedIn accounts, we probably have about 85,000 followers on LinkedIn. Uh, it's awesome. And, it is yeah. so awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, it's pretty cool. So when did the idea come up for you to say, hey, I want to take this to the next level? I actually am getting so good and proficient at this. I want to create Giant Jacks Media. Yeah, well, what happened is, is I, is I, you know, was exploding the growth at the law firm. Other people started noticing and they were like, hey, what are you doing? I'm getting your blogs. I see your videos. And they started asking for help because they had the same challenges that I had, which is they didn't want to go spend tens of thousands of dollars trying to market. They were very busy because they didn't have, like I didn't have a team of 20 people pushing buttons, pulling levers. Yeah. And they, uh, they, they um, were just, you know, needed to stand out. 
And so with those challenges, uh, they, they were like me. And so they needed help. So I started helping people, got really busy. And then uh, I got too busy to keep doing it just for free, really. And so founded the company and it's taken off and it's, you know, helping consultants, coaches, you know, businesses do the things that Jared, you and I know need to be done. Sales, marketing, branding, standing out, being different. And when they're coming to you, what's that core need that they're coming with? What is that thing of like, I need this. I, I'm not doing it on my own. What, what is that one thing that they're coming to you for? If you had to put it into one box. Yeah. If I could put it into two of the two things, one is the problem is, is like I work with a lot of coaches and consultants and they all look the same. That business has exploded over the years. Everybody's mm -hmm. a coach today. You know, there's like 12 year old kids. I'm a coach. I'm a coach to CEOs. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. you know, okay, everyone's a coach. And so they're not standing out. They look like everybody else. And there's so much noise, they need yeah. to stand out. And yeah. so it's it's so it's the personal brand and it's being squeaky wheel gets the grease and it's video on that. So most of them aren't doing that. So that's one. They have that problem, which is counterintuitive. When they're not standing out, you're not growing. The mm -hmm. other problem is very few have an ongoing, consistent identifiable process where every single month they are engaging in conversations with prospects. You know, they're cold calling, they're networking, it's thrown together with bubble gum and toothpicks. And those things, you know, work, but they, but you, there's different ways to do it today. There's new tools, yeah. strategies, they don't have it. And so they're flopping around, they're not growing or it's slow growth. So those are the two big areas. Yeah. I'm, a lot of people say that consistency the deliverable consistency is one of the things why we trust things like Amazon Prime. We trust things like UPS and FedEx. All they do is deliver on time. If you yeah. deliver on time, people will trust you. And trust in this world is really big. They have to know about you, then they have to like you, and then they have to trust you. So if yeah. they don't know about you, then forget it. And if they don't like you through the media you're sending, then forget it. And then you have to earn their trust. So it really is a multi-tiered stage to get people to engage with even a company. But if they don't know about you, it doesn't matter. None totally of this agree. stuff matters. Yeah. No, to totally agree, especially on the consistency because it's kind of like in life, you know, whether you're on a diet, you're working out, whatever it is, people start, stop, start, stop, yep. start, yep. stop, you know, start, never go back, you know, all these yep. things, consistency is key, you know, and being patient for the results, right? Because it doesn't happen if you're doing it the right way really quickly a lot of times. So mm -hmm. consistency and patience, agree. Yeah, sustainable growth. I don't think a lot of people understand that. And there's no overnight success. I have yet to meet anybody that has overnight success. Overnight success took me six years. And it's like, it's just a fallacy. And I wish we could just erase that from the mindset. I've yet to meet anybody that has truly passive growth or passive income that's fully generating without any action every day and night that they're asleep and awake. I've yet to meet anyone who does that. So that's a fallacy. Let's wow. just dispel that myth. And then this idea that, you know, you could do it all on your own too. And I, I, I'm all about being self-motivated and doing DIY model, but like you have to have coaches and mentors and support to get to the point where you could maybe get to a DIY model. Oh yeah. There's so much noise out there today and people are confused because you know, what do you do if you're building a brand, growing, selling, marketing? There's so many choices, so much noise. Yeah. You got to cut through it and get to the system that works for you. Trust somebody to educate you and teach you and partner with you along the way, which I know you and I are both big on. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. So I'm so glad you said system because back when we were starting in this business, we started in 2013 and in the end of 2017, we said, hey, We've really built up a bunch of thought leaders and we've created the process. And we've created a system and you start to get to a point in your business where it's like, there's only one of me. I can, you know, have people that work for me, but I want to reach more people. I want to scale out. And one of the ways I thought of doing it back in 2017 was an online course. So back then we created break on through. It was inspired by Jim Morrison to break out of the shell, step into the spotlight of thought leadership. And the example I always give is we all love to watch TED Talks, right? Right. Now, I have been to TED Talks. We have shot TED Talks. I've interviewed TED speakers. What happens when you get off the stage? When you step off that stage and people come rushing up to you, 
they're so excited, then what? That's where we jump in. Oh, you have to keep them engaged. You have to send them video. You have to put them on their email list. You need a website and a landing page with a lead magnet. And that's where their heads just go like, but dude, I'm an expert. I, I don't know how to do all those things. Right. Yeah. I'm an expert in X. And, and I'm, I'm all about that. You should be an expert in X. So we built this holistic marketing system in six weeks. It's called Break On Through. And I thought today we could go through the six because I know you're using, if not all of the six, probably 10. But I just want to go through the six because we break it into six-week courses. It's very digestible. It's 99% video with a couple of downloads. And we space it out so people can actually have weekly breakout challenges. So at the end of each week of content, they have to do a challenge. And then they start the new week. So the first one I want to go over with you is a couple of the books that we like, which one of them that I always call out to every client, everyone who goes through the course is Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Why are you even doing this business? Why is it important to you? And then what are you going to make and how are you going to deliver it? So that's our foundational first entry to the course is the why. Why are you helping people? So if you were to synthesize your business in uh, Giant Jacks Media, What's the why? Like, why do you do what you do? Yeah, and it's great because I don't think a lot of people think about that. They start going fast forward. Yeah, they go the how and the what. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then answer that. And yeah, I mean, the, the why for us is because really that people needed help, you know, and I, when you're in that role of truly filling a, a need and helping people and seeing progress because you can measure these things, especially when you're selling and you know getting new clients and so the why was really for me was being able to help people uh that had my same challenges and so it bring, brings a lot of you know it brings a lot of feel good you know emotion when you're doing that and uh in helping other people and partnering so that was my why is uh, i love i love helping and it, i can measure it and see it and you actually do. I've actually watched a lot of your content and you probably don't know that, but I do watch a lot of your content and you are really earnest about like, this is going to help you. I'm trying to give you something. This is a gift to help you. So you don't stumble down the path of the ignorant because it's dangerous. And in your work, it's really critical. Like there's people's lives at stake in the legal practice that you represent that if things don't go well, their lives are really screwed up. No, thanks for saying that. Nice comments. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, you know, you're not going to find an argument for me. I, no, I, no. I really feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. No, it comes through, I guess, is what I'm saying is, and I'm going to call out this word authenticity. Like it's, it's authentic that you give a shit and you care about people and that comes through. And one of the ways that comes through is through the videos that you create. No, thanks for saying that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you, you picked up on that. Yeah. So that's like the, the foundational element of the course. The other thing we dive into on the first part of the course is your purpose and your story around your purpose and why are you doing what you're doing, like I said. And one of the, we have four other experts on the course. One of them was Brandon Peel, who wrote Planet on Purpose. And he's actually a purpose guide. He helps people find their purpose in their lives and then expand it out into the business world. So that's like the foundation, right? You cannot build anything without a strong foundation. So we start there and people might think, well, wait, I've already got this and I've already got that. I was like, no, no, back up. Let's just make sure, let's make sure the foundation is stable before we try to build a massive house on top of it. Yeah. I mean, you, you and I are, you know, speak the same language because, yeah. you know, uh, I, I, I preach that all the time is you can't go to execution phase phase without the foundation because yeah. then it's going to be all choppy and, and it, it clunky or it might not work at all. So yeah. Now there's different ideas about what that foundation looks like. You and I have yeah. very similar opinions about what it is, but, mm -hmm. but I, I, I would concur with that point. Yeah. The second part of it we go into is that brand. So you, you know, you're an interesting cat because you don't put Paul Hitchcock on the, on the name plate. You work with different brands. Like you started giant Jack. So what does giant Jack's media stand for? Uh, the, the brand, the naming and the brand. Like where did the name come from? Yeah, like how did you name it? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, because it was founded out of the law firm and it had another name. It had giant something else. And actually, I'll tell you, it had, it had giant peach media because I'm a huge fan of James and the Giant Peach and the nice. author Ray Dow. So yeah. I had this whole 
you know, image and logo around the giant peach and everything. <laughs> and the, the founder of our law firm, his wife is our founder likes to say is, is a cat lady and she loves cats. <laughs> so she said, look, instead of peach, I want Jax, J A X X. Cause it's of the cat family and it's the founder's wife. What, what, what is I going to do? Argue with her. And so it became giant. Jack. I hear the cat videos are quite popular on the internet too, by the way. Oh yeah. So oh, I wonder yeah. if you're like subconsciously pulling in all the cat folks who love to watch cat videos. I probably should tie in some, you know, live cat footage, you know, but. Well, I love it because it speaks to like when you, like, I don't know if you noticed, but when you were telling the story, you got really excited, you got personal and you brought up some things that just made you expand about the brand. Yeah. And that's one of those key things. Like you've got to be excited about your brand. You've got to understand why you built it and then share it with others and they remember it. Like I'm probably never going to forget Giant Jacks and the cat from the peach and the book. And you know, like now I've got this story. So it's fun right. and that's being memorable, right? Marketing is yeah. about being memorable. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so one of the other things we do is like some people want to go down the path of, I need to brand myself as an author and a speaker. So I'm going to use my personal name. I have not been the fan of that personally because my last name is brick. So I get to kind of jump around by having brick house media. <laughs> and that was intentional because uh, in college people called me brick house. They didn't, some people didn't even know I had a first name and it stuck and it made people smile. And when I first started brick house images, which was the photography freelance business back in 2001, um, it just stuck. And so it made sense when I evolved into a media company after I got an MBA, it was like, I'm doing all these different things. I'm a media company, but let's keep the break house part. And because it's my name, I kind of get to play both roles. But how do you, do you have clients that are doing their personal brand and business branding? Yeah, it's funny because I love, you know, brick house media and the tie in yeah. with your last name is hilarious. And yeah. the branding thing is huge between, you know, corporate and, and people. And I always say that, okay, there's the mothership. If you work for a company, there's the mothership. And the mothership wants you to market them and everything be about them and nothing wrong with that. However, people, in my opinion, tend to want to work with other people and that, you know, if you're Coca-Cola, it's a different story because you're massive and you branded that for a hundred yeah. years. But yeah. for us, me and you solopreneurs, it's, you got to be a human being first. You can't be a logo. And there's got to be a person behind it. So there is a, there's a, the right combination between building your personal brand, but also, you know, having a, a logo connected to it. Uh, and you can do both, but it's, it, there's a balancing act there, but, but people are going to make decisions to work with you or even to get on a phone call with you because you're human and they like you and they identify with you. And yeah. then your brand is around that. That's, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. I like to think of some of the bigger brands like, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk has Vayner media and he has products under Vayner media, but he brands himself as Gary Vaynerchuk when he wants to do his own thought leadership content. So yeah. it's an interesting, it really depends on your business model. It depends on what you're doing, what you're trying to do. If you're making a widget, let's say you're making this bottle, you probably don't need to call this the Jared brick bottle, right? It's probably right. sexier you know, if you call it the swell bottle, you know what yeah. I mean? And, yeah. it, and, it, and it matches the product better. So it really depends on your market, your product, your services. And then you get to personify it, like what you were saying, as the human side of it through the brand. It just depends yeah. on the business is what I'm getting yeah. at. Well, yeah. And like your brand, for example, I mean, I, I always, you know, the, you know, the brick, brick house, it's, it's unforgettable. I mean, number one, yeah. it's your last name, but yeah. also... Brick house, you know, you have a logo there, you have an image that follows you wherever you're going. So you have a great tie in there. And for me, it's giant TV. You know, I've got a brand, mm -hmm. which is a, you know, I connect to a lot of things, giant TV, yeah. can do a lot of video. So, and it's a TV, it's relatable, you know, people, you know, see a TV. And my hope is over time, they associate that, you know, a TV, they think of me and video. So, you know, there's a science behind it. That's good. That, that takes us right to part three of the course. It's building your online world, the website, your lead magnets. And if people don't know what a lead magnet is, I'm going to explain that in a sec. Your blog or your vlog, your email, and maybe building out a landing page. So I'm going to go through that and break that down a little bit. So 
a lot of people think they don't need a website these days because they have social channels. Now, until there was Shopify tied to Instagram or Facebook that you could sell on, you could not sell anything through social media. So it's only in the last two years that this has changed a little bit. And the people buying directly through social media is still quite low compared to website e-commerce. So if you're going to sell something on the internet, you need a website. You need some portal to take a commerce exchange that is off social media, unless you're going to sell a product through social, which is still rare. That's right. not happening like crazy. So I always remind people, you still need a domain name. You still need a website. You still need to bring people away from social media. Once you've got their attention, take them off social media to directly communicate them with your message. Jared, is, um, that, also, is that also about SEO? You want a website because it, it, it is more in tune to SEO than your social sites? Or is that, that so not this is, a, this is the way I explain it. People go to Google to buy something. Okay, it's like, I know what I want to buy. I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to type it in. SEO is going to work, let's hope. And it's going to take me your product or service. You go to social media to shop, to look around, to check things out, to be social. It's like walking through a mall or walking a Home Depot. When you walk into Home Depot, you know what you're going to buy, hopefully. Yeah, There's yeah. A lot of options. And the options is like Google. It's like a billion options. That's the challenge on Google. It's like you're up against... 10 other 15 other brands on page one yeah, yeah. the problem with social is there's so much going on and you talked about that attention right about getting people's attention and gary v's big on this like how do you get people's attention i think it's that consistency and a brand that they relate to yeah so you need that landing page that web even if it's a one-page landing page which means they they clicked on the link and they went to your thing it's fully branded for just you and you made a transaction that transaction might not be money it might be book a call, right? You do a lot of free call booking, right? So tell me about that process that you use. Yeah, I mean, we landing pages are huge for us, and we build those squeeze pages to collect emails and mm -hmm. and uh, drive people to landing page because you know, we have a website, great website, interactive, it's awesome. Yeah. But uh, and we drive people to that. But if you want to get a specific outcome and just Boom, you're targeting one thing, one thing. Yeah. One thing cause you go to a website and people are going to kind of get lost and you know, they may see a bunch of great things, nothing wrong with that. But if I want them to take this action, they're going to a landing page and I can have a video on there and have a call to action. And I can, it's just boom. It's a tight sales funnel on just yeah. one page. So that's, that's why that's how we use it. We've got those going out everywhere. Yeah. So it's a good example. And I, I mentioned lead magnet. So lead magnet is it's a magnet that attracts people and it could be a PDF. It could be a video series. It's something that you put out to the web. Ideally it's free. It's value added content that you're giving people. And then in exchange for that, they're giving you their information, either email, phone, or some contact information to reach back out to them. So a lead magnet is something you put out to the world. It's trying to get a lead and by attracting people. So you, I've, I've been doing this. We made a one page PDF for an Instagram hack on how to build a vertical profile on Instagram. And I think we now have 95,000 or 9,500 contacts from this one page PDF. Nice. And yeah. It's, yeah. it's just insane. So it's like create that, use your expertise to create the magnet. Either, you know, typically it's a video or a PDF or an asset. And then put it out there and then exchange, you know, in exchange, ask for people to do something. Book a call, yeah. give you their email, their phone number. Yeah. And then the key is once you get the information, which, you know, email, what are you doing with the information? Right? Yes. Which yes. Is the key. Because if you just have the information, okay, now it's how are you nurturing that person that signed up? Yeah, they get your product, but now what are you going to do? And I think yeah. that's an important follow up to that. No, and that's where your sales mind is coming in. And you could see why if you're an expert and you're the attorney, you're the speaker, you're the author, you can't keep all this stuff in your mind. No. It's like, this is why you outsource to a media company, to a media expert, and you let us do the work because there's just too many moving parts to this thing, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, like a, it's like just a bunch of tentacles. And, <laughs> you know, you, you got to know how to connect yeah. all the dots and you got yeah. it's like, spider web thing out there and it's it can it can be overwhelming if if it's you're not in that business so part four and part five go into two areas that i know you're going to love part four is about creating content curating content which means you select content from around the web and you curate it into your feeds 
And we always say it should be in four buckets, right? Educational, which you're so good at. Inspirational, which means it motivates people. Um, entertainment, which is actually hard to do in the business world, actually entertain people. And then the other one is just value added content. It's just giving people a value. It could be a recipe. So it's not going to you know, blow someone's mind, but it might be something they want. Um, so what are, I, I think you tend to lean on the educational part, right? Uh, yeah. 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 What's the response you get from people with that? Yeah. So, uh, God, I mean, we can talk for an hour on just this yeah. one. Alone. No, no, no. We easily could. We probably should do a follow up. Yeah. Maybe go deep. But the, the high level important things when it comes to content for me is number one is you have to give before you can take. And so, and this is a mistake people make. The first reach out they have or nurture they have is a selling piece of content. They're asking somebody to do something, get on a call, buy my product, see my service. Yeah. You haven't given them anything. You haven't mm -hmm. built any rapport. So the content has got to be give before you take. I think that's very important. The other thing is it's really kind of a rule of thumb to follow is kind of, uh, you know, market, 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 sell, market, 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 sell, or brand, 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 sell, as yeah. opposed to just selling all the time. And so your content shouldn't be just selling all the time. It's got to be, you know, marketing, branding, giving, educating. And so that's really important. And, um, and when we've done that, is we give out a lot of really great content for free. I mean, I've got yeah. you know, my own content on sales and marketing, and when I'm doing work for the law firm, it's the attorney, CPA, I mean, we're all busy, but it's high level content and uh, you know, packaged in a way that's easily digestible for people. Yeah. It's mainly video uh, that's repurposed everywhere, but uh, if you're focused on those high level things, and there's a lot of subcategories underneath that, then, then your content's going to work. Create your own, which will build your profile, your credibility. Well, we, we take a different approach. I'll, I'll admit, I'm going to push back a little bit because in the beginning, if you're not creating that much content, you do an 80-20 rule where right. you're sharing other people's, but, it's, but you're, you're telling them why you're sharing it. Yeah. Paul, you should read this book. It's a fantastic book. Here's the link to the book. Or here's a video about the author speaking about the book. So you're giving them an insight on why you're sharing it, that it's related to you. It's related to them, but it's something you're sharing. It's like telling somebody oh, no, about I don't, I, I don't a disagree. movie or, yeah. So I think we're on the same page, but I agree. You shouldn't just be handing people to someone else and go, go over there. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I get asked that all the time when I bring it up. Is people, you know, so there's nothing wrong if you, if you do it the way you do it, share other yes. content, explain With insight. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Give insight, give insight. So, you know, yeah, we, you, you said it perfectly. Like we do the 80, 20 strategy. So over, let's say Monday to Friday, four days out of the week, you're giving value added content. One day out of the week, you're selling something directly. Book a call, buy this, try the lead magnet, get a demo, get a test, get a sample. So you're just kind of easy selling, not hard selling. Just try something low, low hanging fruit, you know, lower price point item potentially and getting them like, yeah, we're in business folks. This like, let's not pretend these are businesses. We're not out to just only help each other. We're right. out to help each other by you do business. I do business, you do business and we all rise up. Right. So yeah. I think the whole idea of like it's selling, it's, it's all, it's the only problem selling is a problem is if you're not helping somebody. That's right. If your product or service is not helping somebody, I don't care what you're selling, get it out of my way. The next thing we're going to talk about is channels, right? Because I know you're a big fan of, so I have this thing where it's syndication versus share. So to me, if I want to share something, I'll just text it to someone, I'll message you. That's sharing something. Syndication means I'm going to take this thing, let's say it's a PDF or a blog post, and I'm going to syndicate it. I'm going to put it out on five channels whether it's LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, my blog, and see where the leads come from. It's the wide net approach. And the way that this works is that you don't know where people are right now. People are fragmented. The industry and the audiences are all over the map. and You just don't know where you're going to get them from and where they're going to find you. So what are some of the channels that you've been focusing on? Yeah. And would you say, when you use the phrase syndication, is it the yeah. same kind of repurpose? Is that a fair statement? Well, you're, it's actually the method of delivery. So you're saying take an asset and reuse it 
And that's totally the same thing, but you're going to reuse it across which channels. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's the same, same topic, same idea. Yeah. So um, I'm feeling it. Other people have said this, uh, not a mystery, but um, is when you, when you have a great piece of content, is first of all repurpose it right so create yep. different things so maybe you shoot a shoot a video and you can repurpose a video into your podcast into a blog into an article you know into a little image you know and and so you can repurpose it so one good piece of content becomes you know three four or five that's one thing yeah and then as far as sending it out and so big on linkedin you know uh, that's yeah. where a lot of our audience is so uh, you know, it's it's going on LinkedIn. A lot of video, text posting, images are what are resonating now, and, and mm -hmm. now you know documents are more more people are doing documents. We've done some pretty cool, but um, so it's LinkedIn and it's you know Facebook, Twitter. We have those channels. YouTube uh, is our library of videos. So we have our content. We have you know three podcast shows. So we've See, got you're already doing you're it's exactly what I'm saying. You don't know where people are going to come through, right? You know what it would be. So we've got the, the grapevine. Yeah, yeah. Just put it out to the grapevine. Email, blog list, and you know, we're on TikTok. So we're kind of yeah. you know I love that you guys are on TikTok. That's so yeah, cool. so, you know, right. I mean yeah. a 52 year old guy on TikTok, it's hilarious. Yeah. My kids are like, <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? You know, they're embarrassed. But you know what? Just out there, you know, and it just what Gary Vaynerchuk would be so proud of you. He wants people to get on TikTok early. Because what happened, you look at every single one of these platforms, where did it start with the, with the younger demographic? And right. where is it now with the older demographic? And I don't yeah. mean old in the 70s, I mean 30s to 70. Yeah. You know, yeah. it shifts. Every single platform I've seen shifts. It shifts. And it skews young and it skews to older as it matures. The totally. platforms mature. Totally. And they and love it because they couldn't sustain it without other demographics. No, no. And yeah. what, what you say too is that, when you're on some of these, you know, the, the main platforms and some of the cutting edge ones, maybe they're not, you know, they're not working out or things aren't happening, but what it tells the people that are your clients or prospects in your community is that you're forward thinking and you're exploring and you're trying things and you have your thumb on the pulse of what's going on. And I think that's a good thing, if nothing else, for, for branding and marketing that you're out there doing these things. It totally is. And earlier you had mentioned SEO and I can tell you, you search Freak House Media and we will dominate page one. And you know what it is? It's not just the website. The website's not even always number one. It could be LinkedIn. It could be Facebook. It could be our YouTube channel. So you just want to be on so many channels that all of page one of Google is you because yeah. all channels should lead back to you anyway. Right. They're all going to find your website, your phone number, your email on those channels. Ideally, if you brand them right, goes back to you know week one and two of the course you got to brand it right right you set it up right you got to yeah. build the channel correctly so they get back to your home base um, yeah. but you should dominate page one not just like the first result i want you to dominate all of page one on google because you're on all the different media channels and the challenge is and i've heard different you know different people talk about this yes it is difficult to be dominant on that channel but at least you have a presence at least you have a branded presence on that channel. Right. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. Because building up an audience on YouTube, for example, is really hard. I mean, it's its own entity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's an industry in and of itself to build an audience totally on is. YouTube. So pick, you know, pick yours. For us, it's been LinkedIn has been massive for us and a blog. That's where we kind of said, okay, let's dominate LinkedIn. Let's dominate email marketing with the blog. We have. Then it's you know over time you start spreading out and build these other channels because you know that's we that's why we did it. Perfect. So you took us right into uh, the sixth part of the course, which is launching into leadership. You've got your brand, you've got your why story, you've got your content, you've got your channels ready. Now you're ready to launch. So you had talked about consistency. We try to do three to twelve month plans max because things are changing very fast right now. And it's hard to stay consistent for longer than three to 12 months. Because what happens is your strategy changes, your plans change, new products arise. And so it, I don't want people to focus on the five year, you should have five year goals, but as far as a strategy, a three to six month to 12 month plan. So that's what we help people do at the end of the course. What are you gonna set up your, your milestone targets three, six and 12 months out? 
Uh, that's a great way to look at it. And then you kind of rejigger after three to six months. Yep. You create a content calendar. You go back and look at your goals after three to 12 months. Did you meet your goals? Look at the data that shows. I'm, I'm a big fan of analytics and data. Look at the pages, look at the leads. How many did you close? What's your conversion rate? Now we're getting into marketing jargon and I don't want to lose people there, but like that is the data, but marketing has become beta, very data centric, right. um, extremely data centric. And again, you're the expert. You don't want the attorney, the author, the speaker doing all this stuff on their own without this framework, right? right. You want to give them this framework so they understand it. They can hire a virtual assistant. They can hire a in-person assistant. They can contract it out on a network. They can hire a media company. The whole point is that they understand it so that they can hand it over and say, here's my brand. Here's the content. Here's the video. You go do it. Yep. Yep. And I got to tell you, it's, it's spot on because so many campaigns and practice builds don't work because people aren't organized and they're flopping around. They're trying different things. They don't have a resource telling them, yeah. here's the template for you. Here's how to execute it. Here's the foundation. And, and they, they don't, they don't do it. And it requires a commitment. Like when I'm working with people, I know you're the same way, Jared, it requires a commitment on their end too. You got to commit. Yeah. Doing the things to make this successful. I need to commit to my, it's a partnership and you know, it takes, it takes two to make it really work. And I find a lot of campaigns, people that I work with where it doesn't work. We part ways is because they weren't committed. And at some point there's a human element on their side. That's got to be consistent, get in there and do the things they need to do. Cause you can't automate and do everything. Um, totally. And, no, and, uh, totally. Yeah. yeah. No, I totally agree. And that's the whole point of starting, you know, w what we do now is that our clients that we work with, we, we have their teams or their, if it's a solopreneur, join the course, we build it into the part of the plan. The first six to eight weeks, they focus on the course as we're developing their brand, as we're building out their channels, because there's this ramp up period, right? We typically engage with clients from three to six to 12 months uh, for our work. And then we, we teach people how to fish. That's the whole point. And we set them up with assistance or train assistance for them. But the whole point is to empower them, inspire them, get them motivated so they understand the process, but then have a support system to go, okay, cool. Now, how do I keep this engine running? Because now we've built this awesome thing. And I got to say, I've seen over the years, we've handed clients an entire system and they've dropped the ball. That's right. not on us. You know, like you can train an athlete and a team. If they don't go out and play like you train them, it's not on you as a coach. Right, right. Really not. Yeah. They have to take some responsibility yeah. for growing, especially in business too. It's, it's, people have to make their own way in the business. You can only support them so much. You can't carry their load. I've tried. I've <laughs> tried. And it's, it's hard because you want to see everyone you work with succeed. You do. Yeah. And sometimes you, it's on them, you know? It, it's on them. And I've, I've, I've seen, you know, obviously I've seen your stuff and your methodology yeah. and you're very detailed and it's like, okay, boom, 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 do these things. So um, I uh, love the way you're doing it. And uh, yeah, uh, I get it. People got people to jump in and do it also on their end. You want to make a real investment in the commitment and things that work. So we offer one-to-one -one sessions with the course. And it's really this holistic framework that people build from. That's break off through, man. It's a beautiful system. And wow. to be able to go from that, and we've seen it. We just, I just watched a client on a very large blog be interviewed and I was so happy to <laughs> see him get interviewed and it was just like it's so gratifying to see people actually stepping into that leadership role being respected getting the respect that they deserve collaborating with others that are bigger than them so they can grow I think it's not always about the sale it's really not it's about big collaborations it's about supporting each other getting known being aware of your brand and your business and you know it's a beautiful thing when you get to help people I really enjoy it Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you're right. And if you do all the things the right way, the sales come, you know, with that. Yeah. So, uh, love, you love it, man. Love, love the course. Yeah. So what, what do you, what are you asking people to do? What's your CTA? What's your call to action for people to find out more about giant jacks? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like anything. I love having conversations, you know, with people, it starts with a conversation and yeah, you and I are very similar. We're, you know, guys that we're not hard, hard close sales guys we're like okay let's talk yep. and what do you have going on and, and sometimes it's a fit sometimes it's not but i just 
conversations are great. I love learning about other people and, and good things happen when you do that. I relate it to dating. You cannot force someone to go out with you. You cannot force them to like you. You've got to earn that by showing who you are, being authentic, building up trust, and then allowing people to trust you back because they at least know and like you. And then they can make a choice. And then and making them, do you want to work with me? Great. Then say right. yes. It feels good to say yes. And it also feels good to say no. Right. It's not the right fit for you at that moment in your time. If you're struggling right now and you have zero money and need to put food on the table, please go do that first. Right. This is really about getting to a place where you're comfortable, you're ready to invest in yourself, and you're ready to go to the next level. So that's what we're doing. We do the one-on-one -on -one call, the discovery calls. We offer free complimentary media reviews and discovery calls about the course. So I'll post the link for Break On Through below, and I'll post your link so people can get to know you. It's just, it's so fun catching up with you, Paul. I, I've loved working with you, and it's been fun to catch up. Yeah, no, feel the same way, man. I mean, you and I, it's just kind of like two guys going out. I feel like we're in yeah. a boxing match. We could just keep going back and forth. How about this? How about this? You know, so yeah, yeah. Th thanks for, uh, you know, having me, having me in the conversation. Love it. You're welcome. So Jared and Paul signing off. Everyone be safe out there. Focus on your business. Figure out what you're about and figure out how you're helping people. And if you need re support from us, please reach out to us. All right, all? Mm -hmm. All right. Take care, everybody. All right. See you soon, bud. Bye.